Hi everybody, it's Adrian Kings the Hughes of ZDNet Hardware 2.0 and today I'm going to be taking you on a tour of some of the kit that I use on a daily basis to get my work done. Now right out the gate I need to say that there's some things I'm not going to be covering. For example my iPhone 11 Pro Max that I'm recording this on, my Apple Watch 5, my iPad Pro and my MacBook Pro. I think everybody who wants to see those already seen them a million times and I don't think that I can add anything constructive by showing those. So instead I'm going to show you some of the other kit that makes how I work possible and I tend to work in two different ways. There's times I do a lot of work sitting by my desk and there's times when I'm out and about. And so my kit seems to have become that conglomeration of things that can help me when I'm indoors and outdoors at the same time. And so you'll see a lot of things here that, that have got almost like dual purpose or at least they can be used in a static way or and also in a way, in a mobile way where I'm in a car or I'm hiking or I'm out taking video and photos. So without further ado, let me show you some of the kit that I use on a daily basis. Okay, let's start by taking a look at this mat. I get asked a lot about this. I use it in part because my desk tends to get used for a lot of things from writing on to healing things that are broken to tearing things apart to see what goes on inside of them. And I find that having a mat on there protects the surface that I'm working on. This is an Ansio double-sided self-healing cutting mat. It will heal from sort of cuts that you give it, but it doesn't heal from fire. Um, it's a very good mat. I've, I've, I've had one of these for years now, and I find them to be very, very effective. So I would honestly say if you, if you want something durable surface to work on, get yourself a cutting mat. This is metric on one side, markings imperial on the other. I have it up in metric because I'm in Europe. You can flip it over if you want. Great mat, highly recommended. Now, when it comes to powering devices, I have two companies that I rely on for my chargers and power banks. And the first of those is Zendure. Now I've got a lot of Zendier stuff and I like their products an awful lot. I've got this four port hub, which is called the ZD4P90 DPD. It has a 100 watt port, it has an 18 watt port USB-C and two USB-A ports. It takes power, everything from 100 volts to 250, so I can use it pretty much across the world with no problems at all. I love this because I can use it to power pretty much all my devices, everything from my MacBook Pro all the way down to charging up my tiny little AirPods. This is cool. I've also got this, this power bank. This is the X6 power bank, as you can see, very well used. Dropped quite a few times, as you can see. Still works perfectly. Fantastic bit of kit. I've also got the brand new, as yet, I think unreleased, Zendier Super Tank Pro. I, I absolutely love this gadget. This, this is brilliant. Um, this has been with me over the last few weeks on a number of trips. Again, as you can see, it's had a little bit of a hard life. I've dropped it quite a few times. It's been scuffed quite a few times. Still works fantastic. I've got this Zendier travel adapter that I can use in Europe, UK, and the US and Australia. And it's got a multi adapter on the back and it's got all these ports on it that I can use as well. It doesn't convert voltages, but basically since most gadgets these days are quite happy with everything from 100 volts all the way up to 250, it doesn't really matter, but you know, if you are going to use it, check to make sure that whatever you plug into it isn't going to get blown up because you're using a voltage that it's not very happy with. I've also got this. This is the, I mean, I'll look for a second. I think this is called the X5. Yes, it is called the X5. This is a slightly smaller version of the power bank that they use. Again, had this quite a while, very rugged, 
fantastic a level of usability to it. Um, flawless in terms of its performance, just absolutely flawless. I've also got this, this is new, this is the Superport S4. And if you're wondering about these plugs, these are the UK plugs, I'm in the UK, so we have these enormous plugs on the front, but this does come with US plugs on it, and it does also ship with others, depending on where you are in the world. Again, plenty of USB-C power and some legacy for all the devices. Zendier makes some great stuff. I've never been let down by any of their products, Highly recommended. Another company that I highly recommend because I've never been let down by any of their products is Anchor. And Anchor makes some great stuff from this tiny little USB-C charger. Again, the ginormous UK plug on the front to these power banks. I think these are 20,000 milliamp hour power banks. I have quite a few of these. And again, you've got the legacy USB and power delivery on the front. And also this combination. Again, it, this is a, a charger plus with built-in power bank. Again, super, super handy. This is a PowerCore 3 Fusion 5K. Fantastic bit of kit. I've had this one quite a few months now and been using it quite extensively. None of these products have let me down. They've always been robust. You throw them into a bag or into a suitcase or on your desk or on the floor and they just work. All you have to do with these battery packs is basically remember to charge them up because as with all things, they do need charging up. Security is something that is big in people's thoughts these days and i've moved away from using sms based authentication onto hardware authentication i have a big handful of ubico ubi keys from the usb the old usb a version this one has mnfc built into it and these two are usb c and lightning Ubi keys, robust, last for years. I've been in salt water with these swimming. I've had just, they've dropped in the mud, they've dropped on the floor, flawless. I've also got this Fatian key, which is the same one that Google use for the Titan security. I've had this for, this is not as robust. I've had this for quite a while, but it does break apart quite easily. So it's not as durable as these keys. So I tend to take a little bit more care of this one. And this one does also need charging up. It does have an internal battery into it. So you've got to make sure that it is charged up when you want to use it. I also feel that using flash drives is a great way to hand your data over to somebody else if the data on it isn't encrypted. So I've been, for quite a few years now, been using these Apricorn drives, the this one is the, I'm trying to remember what this one is called. This one is called the Aegis Secure Key 3NXC. It has this keypad on the front and you enter your pin or code on the front. Otherwise, your data is pretty much irrevocably locked up on there. Forget the key, it's history, enter the wrong password too many times, your data is wiped. Again, Peace of mind when you're on the move. I find that any important data I tend to want to put on these things rather than just on random flash drives that just end up, well, lost. But I do use some random flash drives for things like video and photo that I don't really care about too much. This one is a RAV power drive. It's a 128 gigabyte drive. On one end I can connect to my iPhone, the other end to my computer, and it's pretty. It's pretty cool, actually. It's pretty straightforward to use. It's great if you're shooting a lot of video and you don't want to fill up your phone and with all the consequences of just ending up with too much stuff on your phone. So I've got a few of these. I also got this SanDisk drive. Again, I only use these for photos and video, stuff that isn't confidential. On the one end of this, there's a legacy USB-A. 
the other side, USB-C. And this one's quite a big 256 gigabyte drive. Again, I haven't been let down by any of these drives. I use them a lot. They output a lot of, they throughput a lot of data and flawless. I always recommend getting decent quality flash drives, especially if you're using something, using them for something that is not easily recreatable. So if you're shooting video, you don't want to have to go back and reshoot it because your flash drive was corrupted. When I'm out and about, I also find that I use these Netgear hotspots, mobile hotspots a lot. Um, I know you've most people have got a hotspot facility built in to their phone, but I find that it's kind of handy to have an external device, especially if you've got a lot of devices that you're connecting to it. This has its own battery. It lasts for about almost a day of use. You shove a SIM card into it and it's ready to rock. It's a great way to share data without having to cludge up your phone in doing it that way. I've got, this is the Netgear Nighthawk M1. I also got the M2. Um, the M2 suffered a bit of a weight delete because I've lost the battery uh, cover on it, but it still works fine. Also for the Netgear, I've got the external antenna, 3G, 4G antenna. I've stuck this reflective tape on it just because this gets put in variety of places and I want to give it a fighting chance I don't lose it. This is great when you're in low signal areas. Just plug this into the back of it and it just gives you a slightly better signal. Fantastic bit of kit. Quite cheap. Again, if you're out and about a lot, these make life a lot easier. I've got a thing about stickers, as you can see. I put, I put name tapes and labels on a lot of things. And I love this brother of P-Touch E300 labeler. It's very cool. Lots of functionality to it. Quite bulky. Comes with its own built-in battery, which sort of discharges when you leave it on its own for too long. That's about the only downside of it I can see, but you could always just take the battery out and just stop, stop that discharging. Make great labels, super tough, super durable, great for things that you're taking outdoors. Absolutely amazing. Highly recommend it for professionals who want to make sure that all their stuff, all their hardware is labeled. This, this is really cool. Another thing I get asked a lot about is docks. Because most laptops and so on these days come with just USB-C on them, but in the real world, you do need a little bit more than USB-C. I use these pluggable docks. I find them to be very, very good. This is a USB-C dock. It has a lot of different features on it. You do need an external power supply on it, which is a little bit of a, of a pain, but other than that, fantastic. When I need something a bit smaller, I have these pluggable dongles. Essentially, I've got the HDMI, VGA, display port, and Ethernet. And on the other end is the USB-C. If I need something a little bit in between those two, this tiny little pluggable USB-C dock again. Comes with USB output, I've got HDMI, and I've got a USB-A port on it, USB 3.0. Again, handy, you can just chuck it into a bag, job done, fantastic. Coverage of docks wouldn't be complete without what is probably my favorite dock of all, and it's this Anchor dock. It's the 7-in-1, the 7-in-1 Premium dock. The, on one end you've got your USB-C and on the front you've got the HDMI, you've got different card slots, you've got power delivery, USB-C, another USB-C and a couple of USB-A docks, uh, USB-A ports. Fantastic bit of kit. This is super durable. I've had this thrown into a number of bags over the years and just forgotten about it and then you bring it out and you just plug it in when you need it and it just works. Fantastic. I think this, this costs about $35. It's probably the best accessory that you can buy these days. It is just, just fantastic. I love this one. This goes with me everywhere that my MacBook or iPad Pro go. While I'm an iPhone user, 
I also love this black view. This is the BV9800 Pro, and it is the one with the thermal camera built into it. And if you've never used thermal cameras too much, they are fantastic for diagnosing problems. The, 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 basically, there's so much you can do with a thermal camera that I really could do with doing a whole series of posts on the number of things that I've done with this, from diagnosing components that are failing inside chargers and electronic devices to finding problems with car charging systems, car brakes, uh, HVAC systems. There's so much you can do with this. It is an amazing bit of kit to have this thermal camera built in. And the phone's really chunky and rugged. I have it inside this little silicone sleeve, not to give it any more protection, but just basically to give it a little bit more grip. Blackview makes some great stuff. I've been impressed by everything they basically make. And this BV9800 Pro is just one of those phones that I find I use a lot primarily because of the thermal camera, but also just because it's a very solid phone. I can take it outdoors. It shoots great video and photos. Not as good, maybe you know, nowhere near as good as the iPhone 11 Pro Max, but then this, this costs less than half the price of that. But it's a very solid Android phone. Highly, highly recommend it. I, I've taken this into the outdoors. It's fallen into mud, fallen into water. This thing is just a beauty. Tools. Everybody loves tools. Everything from this this Leatherman free P4, which has got so many tools on it. I don't even know where most of them are on it. It's just one of those things I just turn to when I need need tools that are just easy to get at. And I've also got bigger toolkits, such as this iFixit Tech toolkit, which is everything from like every bit I'll possibly need for opening devices to spudgers to little tweezers. I've also added a few bits and bobs to this over the years. I've also got little pry bars, suction cups for pulling displays off. This thing is just brilliant. I've done so much work with this one. I've got a bigger one as well with slightly bigger bits, but this is the one that basically just gets used. Um, th this is just a fantastic bit of kit. I fix it, make some great tools. They, they pick out really what you need and so you're paying for what you absolutely need and you're not paying for stuff that you just never use. Highly, highly recommended. One of my new toys is this. This is the Mavic Air 2 drone. Um, this is the, in the UK, every, every drone over 249 grams has to be registered with the government and you have to have your own little license plate on it, which is why I've got it covered up here and here. Um, this drone is just amazing. I've put dozens of hours and ten, many tens of miles on this thing and it's been flawless. It's been absolutely flawless. It shoots fantastic video and 48 meg uh if 4k video 48 megapixel shots just fantastic i'm on the first set of props for it i've never had a problem with it it's just been the simplest most intelligent bits of kit that i've ever used for flying it it just makes flying an absolute joy this this is just one of those well i want to call it a tool but it's actually a toy um yeah, it's been just amazing. I kitted out with a SanDisk Extreme 256 gigabyte card, which I record all my video on, on it. And again, that's been flawless too. I've put a lot of video on this thing since I've, since I've owned it. It's a, a fun thing to fly, but also so, so practical because you can do so much with it from cool aerial shots to investigating stuff that's just you can't get to because it's too high or just too far away again like a thermal camera you just don't know how much you can do with something like this until you actually give it a go fantastic one final bit of kit i want to cover is this monster this is a power station portable power station this has a 24 amp hour lithium ion battery it's big, which is why I've had to change the shot for a second to get it in there. It's one of those things that you charge up from 
the main supply, but it gives you all these other options. You've got USB, you've got 12 volt output, and you've also got this AC output as well, which is great for times when you want AC power, but you're out and about. Inside this is lithium, uh, a bunch of lithium ion batteries. It's very durable, very tough, not too heavy, not too problematic if you're going somewhere in a, in a in a car definitely not something you want to carry in a backpack unless you've got a strong friend with you but this thing has spent a lot of its time outdoors it's a great alternative to having something like a gasoline generator um yes highly recommended if you want to take power outdoors also i feel like quite a safe way to take power outdoors much better than trailing long extension cords around it's just one of those things that just works it's a good bit of kit they are quite expensive but this one has definitely earned its place in the kit that i take outdoors with me especially when i want to keep a lot of things charged up or i do want that convenience of an ac power outlet well i hope you found this tour of some of the kit that i use on a daily basis interesting um there's a lot of different stuff here that i use pretty much everything i use has been extensively tested and by extensively tested i really do mean extensively tested i've been described as much more bold and ballerina when it comes to dealing with my stuff Stuff lives in rucksacks, stuff gets thrown on the floor, stuff gets taken outside, stuff is not really treated with the care and consideration that maybe the manufacturers expected to be taken care of. But all the stuff that I've looked at here has just performed amazingly. Um, I, I, I demand a lot from the stuff that I use. If it's going to have a place in my daily kit, it's gotta work and I don't recommend stuff just because somebody tells me to recommend stuff. Everything I recommend has been extensively tested and these things I'm testing now and using now are just brilliant. Now, outside of this shot that you're looking at here, there are stuff, there are quite a few things I can't show you because they're under embargo or I'm still testing them. So my day-to-day -day kit might change in three months. But I'm very cautious about the stuff that I use myself. Um, new stuff looks good on the face of it, but it can be somewhat problematic or it might have a little bug or it might just be not as strong as the thing that I had before. So I'm very, very cautious and conservative about introducing new kit into what I carry. Um, I hope you found it useful. If you have any questions, let me know. If there's anything else that you'd like me to cover, let me know. Otherwise, have a great day. Thank you very much. Bye.